This is a video describing how the operations of this trolley mo module for HS scale, newly constructed. It is a two track main with one loop and a siding on the loop to store one car um, for the siding and one car on the loop main. There is multiple blocks and I will showcase the operation right now. We have four streetcars on the line, and I will give power, for example, to the Toronto car by need power. Oh, no. This one car, O in green, we'll go to that spot and stop. It's on the main outbound. You want to, if you ever want to operate it, you want to flip this toggle switch right here on the control panel to the up position and I'll showcase that and I'll operate it and I'll go on its merry way if you want to operate these other two on the line you want to actually oh I will say having this one down will keep that one steeple cab from moving you'll it's, it's on its own block Actually, this area. If you want to operate the other two, you want to make sure that the line is clear for its operation before you proceed. Okay, there's current issue with this one wire. So you will now make the Toronto car go by flipping up on this toggle switch. And now, there we go. And now we have that other steeple cab. We will all flip power up to give it power. And I believe it just has a dirty pole or something. There we go. So we can stop it or let the other car go. It depends on how you flip it. Up is for the siding, and down is for the main. Because we have a lot of traffic, I'm going to actually switch the Toronto car to go down that main. And all I did for that was to flip this toggle switch right here um, downward, so that it will, it will set the points for the main. Now, let it be. We will now operate this car, and we want to make sure that it actually goes into the main part of the loop. So I will flip that, and we will now put the pole back on. There we go. And I've set it to the this toggle switch to the middle position, so then neither car has power to move. Now I flip it down. And now the green car will go. We are currently having an issue right now where the frog, some poles and certain street cars will pop off. I will now flip the toggle switch on this switch, uh, turnout. So it's now flipped for the loop. And I will set this car back. Once again, stopping about there. Hmm. Seem to have wanna to depole right there. Same with this one, unrelated to this project module. Now I'll let the steeple cab go. Go ahead and flip the mat. Okay. Now, I have stopped the streetcar right there so that I can allow this Peter Witt Toronto car to now move forward the block. But 
for demonstration purposes, I have set the block right here down so it is in a safe position to stop. Once cleared, we just have to flip this switch up. And now the car is moving forward. We will make its journey around. And we will send it back onto the main and not entering the loop. And all we have to do, again, is flip the switch down. And there it goes. <laughs> Additional switches in the panel view. We have the overhead switch allows streetcars that operate uh, just overhead power uh, for the positive and negative for the track will be allowed to operate that way. If you flip down, it will be able to be utilized in a two rail mode where the where the actual track each rail has its own uh, positive and negative power either way and then the overhead will actually be powered off in this scenario we also have the toggle switch set for locals so then one can use their own power pack uh, on this module and feed power into it and then run street cars that way. We have also set up this so then it can go into the um, ERCF, you know, Electric Railway of Central Florida operation setting. So that's kind of like the Bruce setting where he can feed his own power into this and because of how he has set up his own power supply system, we wanted to make sure that the loop and main lines were separated electrically. So there is a break at this point in space that will isolate the inbound from the outbound track. And the whole loop section is considered outbound power. And we also have automatic block control switch utilized if we wish to start and stop cars, say, on the crossover. This is currently not installed yet, but it is there if necessary. And also we have the light switch, which same situation, you can feed 12 volt power into any lights you may want to install on this. It is currently available if you need. And we have the crossover here. It's a bit finicky, but it will do, does do the job. It is quite the complex overhead um, system of pull-offs and backbones and various other wires and it looks great and it's working really well and it's also isolated on the overhead as well we want to make sure that the different sections this the outbound is actually separated from the inbound power we have flowing through here and then back into the separated again so that's outbound is here separated from inbound power on the overhead. We've done that just to keep with East Penn standards. And you'll see a couple other areas where it is isolated, such as right here. And wherever you have these double arm poles, you'll see an interesting handmade hanger out of a bead. That will isolate the power as well from them. And there's also two other switches down below to meet with these fans and standards. I want to make sure that I show it to you. Currently down here under the electrical system, we do have these two switches. One's dedicated to isolate the overhead. As I said in the earlier case, we want to make sure that the um, inbound and the outbound are separated if necessary for East Penn standards. And we also have another automatic block control bypass switch that meets with East Penn standards since they have two wires that dedicate to that in the connection that we have when we ever we connect from one module to another, which we do have a six pin connector, switch pin connector. This is a 
female end. And we also have a two wire uh, jack in wire for the power supply going to the tortoise switch machine. And any other relays that you may have on the other modules for my block control. And for point of reference, this is the cabling to the from the control panel to the various terminals. And we even have the plug-in for power going in to this module. So we have these two wires going into that European connector that feed the power directly to the track. And we have this wire in black that represents the power going to the torch switch machine and so on and so forth with relays. Torus switch machine is right here, protected also with a wood block just in case. When transporting this module, you don't want to have this damaged, so it's there. And we have the control panel again. I have two bolts right here and here with T-nuts that on the other end you can take on and off whenever you need to utilize this. Again, these are the control switches. This is for the Torus switch machine. This is for that block right here, just in case you need to stop a car before entering these two tracks, the main loop track and the siding loop. And then you have this additional outbound main block just to stop cars before entering that turnout. Thank you, and I hope you have an awesome day and were able to learn a lot from this tutorial.